Now guys, I'd like to show you the squatting barbell wrist curl. What you gotta do, you're gonna grab the bar, and you're gonna just pull it up onto your thighs, so your forearms are on your thighs, and you're in a squatting position here. And then you wanna have the bar roll down the fingertips, and then you're gonna roll back up the fingertips, and then curl the weight. Then you go down, you let the bar roll down the fingertips. Then you're gonna exhale, curl up, and you kind of lean into the exercise. So you go down, and then as you're back here, you're, you're stretching a little bit, so you're leaning back just a little bit. And then as you come up, you're gonna curl, and then you're gonna lean toward the bar, and then come back down. So it's a little like this, straight ahead. So you go down, you let the bar roll down the fingertips, and then you're gonna curl up the fingertips and then curl all the way in, and then roll back down. So the key points here are you're just gonna grab the bar, you're gonna pull it up so your forearms are on your thighs, breaking at the wrist. You're gonna roll the bar down the fingertips and then roll back up the fingertips and then curl, and you lean into it. And then as you go down, kind of lean back just a little bit to stretch the forearms and then you contract and you go toward the bar during the contraction. So you get a really, really tight contraction in the, in the forearm. This will really blow up the forearms really nice. This is a great exercise to develop the, as Larry Scott would say, the, the bowling pin forearm. So that's a big bowling pin. Uh, and he used to have a, um, a special bench that he had it's like a little small little bench and he would get, he'd get right over it and he would get down here like this and really hit the heavy weight. And that's how he built his forearm. So this is a great exercise. Guys, that is a squatting barbell wrist curl. Now guys, I'd like to show you the Zotman curl. Now there's been a lot of controversy about this one. I've, uh, I've never really seen anyone online do it correctly. And it's um, like they, there's all different types of versions of this uh, that are out there. And um, I'm going to show you the correct way. This is the so the key to this is really, it's really the, the rhythm and the, and the form of it all. So what you do is you, you're going to try to, you're going to put your elbow close to your body. So it's kind of jammed into the side. And that's going to allow a little bit of leverage so that you can get into the movement and really start to work on the, the forearm, especially the brachioradialis. So what you do is you want to kind of get into this, this sort of rhythmic pattern. So the elbows are jammed into the side of your body and you're coming up and then you're going over and come up and you're going over. It's like a kind of like a figure eight pattern here. And then you're coming up. So you're pulling up here and so your elbow's close to the side of your body. You're, you're gonna sort of sweep your hips. <laughs> it's like you're kinda getting your hips kinda into it. It's like, a, it's like a little bit of a dance, I guess. So you come up, and you're gonna, so you see my hip and the dumbbell kinda come up at the same time, see that? And then you're gonna come up, and then you transfer over to the exercise, I mean, to the, then you transfer over to the other arm. And you're turning them in. And so the key points to this is it's really getting that rhythm. You know, I've seen so many different versions of this, <coughs> variations or whatever. And it's just, you know, the idea is to, you want to kind of get into that rhythm. Almost, it's almost like a dance, I guess, you know. <laughs> but once you kind of get into it, you really start to find the, the resistance points on the forearms as you're getting into it, and you're curling up. So you, you come up, elbow to the side, and then you turn the dumbbell down. Up, turn it down. And you're keeping the dumbbells in front of you, and you're just working that rhythm.
So it's one of those exercises, takes a little practice, always go light. You know, use five pounds to get the movement down and then start cranking up the weight. This is a really good one and you're gonna get an immediate effect on this. As soon as you're done with it, your forearms will be all big, pumped up. So it's a great exercise, really gets that brachioradialis, really nice, so it gets that nice sharp look to it. Guys, that is the Zotman curl. Now guys, I'm gonna show you the preacher bench reverse forearm curl. And this is a great exercise. It <coughs> really develops the brachioradialis of the, of the arm and it requires a bench, a preacher bench like this. Um, you can use, it's, it's hard to use on the, on the preacher bench that you might see that goes straight down and it's like a 70 degree angle. But that, that's just a little bit harder to, to work with because the, um, it just really cranks on your elbows. But this pad is nice and it's soft so you can put your elbows right in there nice and uh, snug without any any pain and you can really work on the exercise without having to worry about um, hurting your elbows. Now, you want to stand behind the, the preacher bench so we're not sitting down and so you go into a staggered position with your feet so you can have support so that way you can, you're kind of in control of the, of, the, of the weight. Now, this is one of Larry Scott's favorite exercises and he'd always incorporate this into his arm workout. And you can use pretty substantial weight on this. Um, for demonstration purposes, I always kind of use light weight just because it's easier for me to talk. It's rather, it doesn't make any sense for me to crank out heavy weight and go, you know, I'm just try. <laughs> trying to talk and, and uh, discuss what I'm trying to do. So when you see me use the, all these light weights, um, I'm, I'm just doing it for the demonstration. So anyways, you get the idea. So on this one, you want to use a, di a diametric bar and that's <coughs> the bent bar um, configuration. And you're gonna grab the bar right on the down slope here so that your, your thumbs are gonna be higher than your pinkies. So that's, that's the I optimal position that's really gonna isolate the brachioradialis. <coughs> now, you're gonna grab the weight, you're gonna, <coughs> gonna curl it up to get in position, support your elbows, and now you're in that sort of that um, staggered stance for the for, for leverage and then we're gonna drop the bar down but we're gonna extend it here and so your arms are extended about 60 degrees and then you're just gonna curl up it's only about three or four inches of movement and then back down and come up and right there so it's a, just that three-fifths of the movement But what I do is I lie, I kind of sit back into it to stretch more, and then as I curl, I come up just a little bit to kind of work with the movement of the muscle. The key points here is just keeping the arms straight at the beginning, so you get that nice stretch, and then as you curl up, kind of following the pathway of the muscle, come back down, exhale, <sighs> inhale, exhale. Now again, you can use, uh, as you develop this, you'll be able to use a lot of weight. If you ever see Larry Scott do it, he used a tremendous amount of weight and he would just crank that out. His forearms are huge. So this kind of helps create that, like that bowling pin forearm, you know, just those huge forearms. And you'll feel this immediately. As soon as you get into it, you will feel that firing right off on the brachioradialis. It's a great exercise and um, kind of a fun one. So guys, that is the, the preacher bench forearm curl. <coughs> so guys, that is the preacher bench reverse forearm curl. Okay guys, now I wanna show the thumb up curl. Now this one, gonna use dumbbells and we're gonna press the dumbbells down so we're turning them down here so the front of the dumbbell is pressed down keep the elbows close to the body and then you're gonna curl this up and as you're curling 
You're going to now take the front of the dumbbell and touch the deltoids here. So now the back bell is higher and at the front of the movement. And you come back down, point the dumbbells down, exhale to the deltoid, keeping the elbows in, then come back down, point the dumbbells down, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So it looks like this to the front, press the dumbbells down, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, and then inhale. Now, the key here is to point the dumbbells down, keep the elbows close to the body, curl up, and as you come up, you're turning the front of the dumbbell down to touch the deltoid. What I do is when I return the weight back down, so I'll look up. So what I do is I go up, and I'll look up here, and then I'll stay here and let the stretch. And inhale, exhale. So here I look, I look down, and then as I go down, I look up. Okay? So another little key point is when you're coming up, you're looking down, looking down on your forearms. And then as you go down, you're looking up. Exhale. Inhale. By looking up, what it does, it, it allows a, a greater stretch as you're going back down. So it's just a little simple little thing to do, but you can really get more out of it. If you just look up just a little bit, it keeps your shoulders back, and you'll get more stretch on the forearms, and that's the key. So guys, that is the thumb up curl. Okay, now guys, I wanna show you the, the burlesque bump. So in this particular program, it calls for just doing the, the second part of the sissy squat. So this, the, the actual sissy squat there's three phases. There's the knee drop, then there's the burlesque bump, and then there's the flushing. And so there's those three parts incorporated and it's a phenomenal leg workout. But on this volume, Vince just wants us to do the burlesque bump phase. And so I will demonstrate that. Um, we gotta use, you can use two by fours. I like to use an aerobic step that allows me to get a little bit deeper into the exercise. But the two by fours will work on this really well. So you wanna clean the bar up onto your shoulders so that you're kinda in this position like this so the elbows are up and you got support with the bar in the front deltoids. So you have to go down into that burlesque position. So you just go down here and then you're just gonna So you're just doing that burlesque bump so you're going down so the hips will be back. So down here and then So the key points here is that you're down in that low position here and then you, you thrust your hips forward. So that really creates the activation of the rectus femoris. So you're down and then oof. 
and you're thrusting those hips forward and it really burns the quads. And again, we're not doing the full three phases. So we're not gonna do the, the knee drop into the burlesque bump and then back up into that flushing po position. So this is just the second part. And again, once you kind of get used to it and master it, I like doing it be because it doesn't put as much compression forces on my spine or my knees because um, I, I don't use a tremendous amount of weight. You don't need a lot of weight on this one. And you go down, and then down here low, and then you would thrust those hips. And when you do that, make sure that you are feeling it in your quadricep. Some guys will go down and they'll just, they won't get the hips to, to really thrust forward. So that's the key to this. When I get those hips forward, I squeeze the glutes tight and then come back down. down. Just like that. Guys, that is the, the second phase of the sissy squat known as the burlesque bump. Now guys, I wanna show you the frog squat. Now, there's been a lot of controversy with Vince and, and squatting and, and you hear all the stories online and everything about you know, Vince never squatted and, and, uh, and so on. But you have to understand that Vince did do squats, but there were different styles of squatting. His idea was that if you did a regular Olympic barbell squat with a lot of weight, that it can, it can uh, change the, 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 the symmetry of the body by creating a thick waist, big butt, and just kind of thick, uh, powerful uh, legs. But it would ruin the, the shape of, the, of that V taper. And so a lot of it was because of the, the activation of the glutes. And it, it would cause a disproportionate look to the physique. So that's where the controversy kind of lies. And so Vince always would do like front squats or, or uh, sissy squats and then like frog squats as a way to work the quadriceps without activating the glutes as much. So the, the, the whole idea is really to emphasize the quadriceps to develop that nice sweep to the quads while still maintaining the V taper and, the, um, and, and good symmetry. So that's kind of like where Vince's mindset was uh, in terms of doing the, the Olympic barbell squat. So we're gonna do the, the frog squat. What you're gonna do, you're gonna clean the, the, the bar up off, and then you're gonna, gonna kind of go into like a plie almost type of a, of a uh, style squat. So you're gonna bring your feet out wide, you can see, and then you're gonna go down. We're gonna keep the back nice and straight. You're gonna go down, and then we're gonna come up just halfway, and then we're gonna go back down, and then all the way up. And so you go down, keep the back straight, and then you come back up, and then back down. You go down, come back up, and then down, all the way up. So you're squeezing your legs. So you're in this sort of plie, sort of frog leg position. And then you go down, you're gonna get a really nice stretch to the adductors here. And so you go down, keep the back nice and straight, then you just go up halfway, down, and then you come all the way up. And as you're coming in, you're kinda, you're squeezing your legs in. So you're getting a great contraction, but a nice stretch at the, the same time. So you're going down, you stretch, and then you come up right to here. So you're gonna really feel the outer sweep of the legs work. Go down. They come right up into that squat position. Your, your legs are out wide. You got a good base. So that it's when you turn your hips, you're keeping the glutes out of the, out of the equation here. And you're going to really emphasize the, the quadriceps. This is really going to hit the vastus lateralis. It really gets the outside sweep of the legs. And so it's just another great exercise. 
Guys, that is the frog squat. This is the decline bench dumbbell leg curl. This is one you don't really see a lot in gyms, um, but Vince liked, liked this one a lot, and it's one that he used to do all the time at his gym. And this is the actual decline bench from Vince's gym that I'll be demonstrating the exercise on. Now, this one's a little tricky. Um, it's hard to kind of get into. Sometimes it's best to have somebody to help you when you put the dumbbell on. Um, so I'll try to do my best to don't kill myself. But <laughs> so it looks like this. You want to lie down, and then you're going to put the dumbbell in between your feet. And then you're going to curl up the dumbbell, trying to touch the hamstrings. <sighs> So you're holding on to the dumbbell. <sighs> Inhale as you extend. Exhale as you curl. <sighs> Exhale. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. <sighs> and come back down. Now the cool thing about this bench, when you do that exercise, is that you can hold on. So this was a great idea so that you can hold on, kind of pull yourself into it. Um, otherwise, just hold on to the side of the bench. Now, it's actually very difficult for me because of my leg. I'm not able to get full range of motion on this particular exercise. I did the best I could. And also, I have no, I have no feeling in my knee, so, um, it's just difficult for me to do this one, but the idea is to curl all the way up and you would actually touch your hamstrings with the dumbbell. It's a little tricky to negotiate to get the dumbbell on your feet. That's why it's best to have somebody kind of help support you and they can actually kind of spot you as you do this exercise, especially with heavy weight, to kind of help keep the dumbbell between your feet. But when you're holding the dumbbell, that's gonna activate the inner hamstrings, and then when you curl up, you're going to hit the other two aspects of the hamstring. So it's a great exercise. It's one to get sort of used to, but once you get used to it, it becomes a great exercise, and um, it's just something different than just doing the regular, normal leg curl on a machine. So give it a try, guys. It has to be on a decline bench, and um, any decline bench will work. This one happens to work out really well because, again, I can have my arms kind of holding on, I can pull up. So it's a great idea, and it's kind of fun to do. Guys, that is the decline bench dumbbell leg curl. So now, guys, I want to show you the fencer's lunge. Now you're going to pick up straight bar into a clean position up onto your shoulders. So again, I, like, I prefer this position where your arms are crossed, and then you can rest the barbell on your front deltoids. So the idea is to always keep tension on the muscles. So you're never um, losing the synopsis here. And we're gonna go, so you're gonna step into a lunge, and then you're gonna step right up, and then you go right into the next leg. So you're never going up to a full extension. So like, like some, lunges look like this. So people go down, all the way down, and then they come up, and then they switch like this. So that disconnects the muscle action potential because when you go down and you come back up, so right there I'm turned off, and then I go back into it and come back up. So that particular lunge is not as beneficial. So the fencer's lunge, you're constantly moving and you're never coming back up to full extension. So you go down, and then quickly switch right into the next leg. So you're constantly keeping tension on the legs at all times. So it's a quick transfer.
So the idea is that one, it's gonna get your heart rate up, <laughs> but you're going into the lunge, you're getting into the other leg quickly so that it kind of keeps a nice fluid flow going as well as it's gonna keep the, the engagement of those fast twitch fibers because you're constantly moving and you're activating that fast twitch mechanism that allows you to get that explosive power through your legs. And that's just a great exercise because it keeps you engaged, it's gonna get your cardiovascular system, and it just keeps the muscles firing the entire time. Guys, that is the fencer's lunge. Okay, now guys, I wanna show you the donkey calf raise. Now, you can do this with a partner, training partner. What they would do is they, they would just sit, sit on your back while you did the exercise. But I have a machine that allows me to do the, the exercise um, without having to have someone jump on my back. So this is the donkey calf raise. And again, just do the best you can with the, what you have. And again, if you have a partner or you can use, um, if you have a weighted belt, you can do that as well. So I get down and this goes up onto my back. And then you, you're gonna be on the platform and so that your, your hips are over the knee, um, over the ankle, and you're in this 90 degree position here, and then all you do is you're gonna go down, so your heels will be together here, and then you're gonna go right up onto your toes, and then you come back down. You inhale here, and you come all the way up, and you're gonna go up on the big toes, and really hit that peak contraction. Go down, stretch calves, and then you go up, Go up onto the big toes and you're gonna pull your heels together. And you go back down, inhale, and then come up onto the big toes, get that leverage, and then go right into that peak contraction back down, inhale, and exhale. And really lay on it there, and then come back down. Stretch the calves, get a good deep stretch, and then go right up, up onto the big toes, and hit that peak contraction for one to two seconds. Guys, just the key points real quick is you, you want to be at that 90 degree position. You want to have your hips over your ankles. Then you go down for the nice stretch. And then as you come up, you're, you're going all the way up onto the big toe. Get as much uh, peak contraction by going up onto your big toes as possible. And then you, you turn your heels in. So you're going to turn the heels in as you're going up onto your big toes. And, and you really want to create that, that peak contraction and hold it for one to two seconds. Guys, that is the donkey calf raise. Okay, now guys, I wanna show you the 45 degree toe leg press. So you wanna be in a, on a leg press machine that allows you to have the ability to do a calf raise here. At the, so you're gonna lie down on a leg press machine and obviously shoes are off. You always wanna work your calves and bare feet. Or if you have really soft shoes, I do have some like sort of moccasin kind of type of shoes or boxing or karate shoes and, they, and these are really soft so these would work really well. But I always prefer doing the calf exercises with my bare feet anyways. So all you're gonna do is just allow the bar, I mean the, allow the, the carriage to come down so you're stretching your calves and then you're gonna press up and as you press up, you wanna go up onto the big part of the toes so you're, you're putting all your weight to the big toes. And so the, your heels come together. Come back down, exhale, and again, you're pressing everything into the big toe. And then you come back down, stretch, and then you exhale, and you go to the, that peak contraction, and then you bring your heels together, and you come back down. And so you wanna just create as much power as you can by just really, pushing as hard onto the platform as possible onto the big toes, and you'll get a tremendous pump in the calf. And you come down, stretch, and contract. And guys, that is the 45 degree toe leg press. Now guys, I'm gonna show you the Holworth toe raise. 
And what you want to do, you want to be on a, a Smith machine. That will help a lot because this would be very difficult to do with just a freeway bar. I don't think you can do it. And you want to place the calf block 12 inches behind the bar. And we're going to place our feet four inches wide, just a little bit flared out. And you're going to place the bar on your shoulders. So you're going to be in a forward position. And then you're going to go down and you're going to stretch the calves. And then as you come up, you're going to go right up onto the big toes. So you're going to bring your heels together. You're going to go down. You're going to exhale and go to that peak contraction, going up onto the big toes, pressing your heels together. So you go down, inhale, stretch, and then you go up and contract. So you're kind of coming forward a little bit. Inhale and then exhale and really lay on that contraction and then come back down. Inhale, exhale and contract. So in this particular volume, Vince has us do this, and then he suggests that you bring the, the calf block underneath the shoulders, and you add a little bit more weight to the bar, and then you would do a straight up and down raise, toe raise, coming up, doing the same fashion, go up on your big toes, and then you're going to do heavy weights, and you're going to do burns. So the burns would just be... You know, you're going to go down, almost like you're kind of bouncing a little bit, but just getting, just like that. So you'd be cranking out that heavy weight on that final set. So you would do the, the whole worth toe raise for the, the right amount of reps and sets, and then you merely just shift the bar, I mean the, the block underneath the bar, put some heavy weight on there, and then do some burns to finish it out. And it's a, it's a great combination and man, that really blows up the calves, really nice. Guys, that is the whole worth toe raise. So there you have it, guys. Those are the exercises that are in volume five. If you have any questions or would like more information on my programs, you can check me out on my website at www.darylcarnot.com. I want to thank you very much for watching. Take care. See you next time.